Now we can start talking about um, Fire TV. So have you seen this morning, Fire TV is having an ex uh, exceptional momentum and we're very, very happy with it. But there are a lot of different things that you can do with Fire TV and today we're going to tell you what we've wor been working on and what are the new tools for developers that you can use. So again, for uh, the one in the room that weren't here this morning, my name is Mario. I'm the tech evangelist for um, Amazon App Store UK. So my role is to engage with the community of developers uh, in UK to get you guys up to speed on Amazon App Store, on Amazon devices, and all our new um, APIs and SDKs. Uh, and before joining Amazon, I've been doing Android development for many, many years, and still one of uh, my main focus and passions. So again, Let's start talking about Android. So Android is not just for mobile devices anymore. So of course, Android started uh, a few years ago as an operating system for phones. And that was the whole idea. It had a small footprint. It was memory and battery efficient. Uh, but then what happened is that users started playing with, with devices more and more. And, and Android evolved as well. And now you can. Uh, browse your uh, applications and use them and games uh, on, on on tablet devices, which are have a bigger screen. Uh, but then, more recently, in the last few years, a new revolution came in again, which has been TV. So Android, we can say that scale to what we can maybe say it's the less mobile device ever, the TV. The great thing for Android developers like us is that we can actually leverage all the knowledge that we have as, as developers and apply these techniques uh, on new platforms like TV as well. And why I'm talking about Android? Well, because again, Fire TV apps are based on Fire OS. So Fire OS is the operating system that animates all of the Amazon devices. But Fire OS is actually built on top of Android. And we can say that their Amazon devices are their full-fledged Android devices. Um, and if you look at this slide, you will notice an interesting thing, that there is a direct kinship between Fire TV apps and Android TV apps. So what we, you will see today across all the technologies that you can use is that a lot of the tools and most of the tools that you're going to use, they're actually applicable cross-platform. And of course, uh, we're going to tell you everything about Fire TV and how you can focus on Fire TV, but you should always focus your attention and creating apps that work cross-platform. So again, and, um, Fire OS is based on Android uh, Lollipop. And this means that all the tools that you used to, they still work. So if you have to create, it, to create apps for Fire TV, Android Studio is still the way to go. And I'm here and talking about native apps, of course, native Android apps. So this morning we saw how good Fire TV is doing. Uh, so Amazon Fire TV is the number one best-selling streaming media player in US, UK, and Germany. So millions of minutes consumed every day, even just in UK. Um, so when you start thinking about what kind of apps work on, on TV, well, there is one easy answer to this, which is media streaming apps, right? So one of, it's not a surprise that one of the main things that customers and users want to do with TV is watch content. Um, and to do this, we actually provide in two different devices. One is Fire TV Stick, and the other is the Fire TV Box. So even though, as I just said, the operating system for these devices is the same, is Fire OS, and we put a lot of effort in making sure that the code base is the same for all Amazon devices, these two devices are actually quite different. Um, so the Fire TV is, is, is a very powerful um, set-top box. It has uh, one of the few uh, uh, boxes that is capable of running 4K streaming content. Um, is has a quad-core CPU, 2 gig of RAM, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 8 gig of memory. So plenty of horsepower to run not just media streaming apps, but even uh, high-spec games. The Fire TV Stick is another, I would say it's another beast. Fire TV Stick is small, it's portable, you can literally bring it with you wherever you go. Uh, and right now, each one of you has a Fire TV stick, as says today. Um, the great value of Fire TV stick is provides an experience which is quite similar to the Fire TV, so the interface and the, for the streaming is absolutely uh, similar. So you can stream up to full HD, as dual-core CPU, one gig of RAM. Um, but the 
one of the ways of the success uh, of the Fire TV stick has been is incredible that is incredibly affordable. It's 34.99 pounds. So uh, of course we sold a lot of Fire TV sticks, and a lot of the growth of Fire TV has been driven uh, by this enormous adoption by users and enormous adoption by developers as well. So, of course, we have all the big players. So we have Netflix, uh, BBC. But the thing is that we've seen an increasing number of submissions of Fire TV apps. And we are absolutely committed to uh, help you guys, the developers, to create high-quality Fire TV apps with the uh, less effort possible. So, Today, we are going to talk about how you can build apps for Amazon Fire TV in minutes. And when I say minutes, I really, really mean it. Um, so, Fire TV at development. When we firstly released the, um, the Amazon Fire TV, we shipped it with, uh, for developers with an SDK, the Fire TV SDK add-on. And this SDK contained all the widgets and classes and features that allowed you to create apps for Fire TV. But then we listened to the feedback of our developers. They say, you know what, I don't really like an additional SDK that I need to plug into my app. I still have to build my app from scratch, and this is going to make my APK blow up. So we said, you know what, maybe Fire TV SDK is not a very good idea. So uh, starting with Fire OS 5, we introduced full support for the V17 Android Limbeck super library. This means that when you create an app using the V17 Limbeck library uh, with very, very few changes, and actually the main project that you run on the Android Studio Project Wizard work out of the box on Fire TV. So, because the platform underneath it is fully compatible with Limbeck. And so the, the cool part of it is that the first time that you deploy a Fire TV app uh, using Limbeck, it's working cross-platform. By that point, what you have is a template which you will still need to customize quite a bit to make it a fully compelling streaming media app. And we've been listening to the feedback of our developers for a very, very long time, and, and we wanted to create something new and interesting and very easy to use. Uh, and so I'm very, very happy to say that finally this week we launched the uh, Fire App Builder. Uh, and to talk to you more about the Fire App Builder, I invite on stage uh, Chris from Lab126. So uh, Chris has been uh, coming all the way from the US, uh, and he's been uh, leading the Fire App, building, Fire App Builder project. So he's the best person to tell you more about this. So Chris, mm. you have the stage. Right. Thanks, Mario. So yeah, as Mario said, uh, my team's been building this Fire App Builder for a while, uh, and I'm excited to, hear, to be here today to finally talk about it with you guys and see what you think. Um, so, what is the Fire App Builder? The Fire App Builder is Java source code that you download if you want to build a media app quickly for Fire TV. So, why would you use it? Um, if you don't want to start from the ground up building a Fire TV app, you can start with this framework, plug in some recipes and some configurations. We made uh, configuration files called recipes that you configure. Uh, these are easy to use configuration files that read your uh, media feed and will build an app for you. Um, so this is still Java code. You still use Android Studio, as Mario mentioned, um, and that's a good way to build, build your apps for Fire TV and Android. So another great thing about this, this toolkit is that it contains modules. So if you want to use um, some of our inbuilt modules, you can use those on a plug-and-play basis. If you want to extend the interfaces that we've written, you can also write your own modules as well. Um, so you, you, don't need to use, you don't need to rewrite code that we've already written for you. You can extend upon what, we've, what we give you. Um, if you have a media URL that has JSON feeds or XML feeds or MRSS, it parses those feeds and produces the app that it, it'll display those videos in the app. Um, and again, it, you can extend it with your own code. This is actual Java source you're going to go to GitHub and download. So you can use what we have and be out of the box with an Android app quickly, or you can add on top of it with your own uh, Java code. And of course, it supports the whole Fire TV family that we've been talking about. It's doing so well and is very popular. Okay, so the next slide is going to be a quick uh, video walkthrough of what the app looks like. And again, this is just, just out of the box how it looks. Um, we're going to show kind of the main browse experience. And when you dive deeper into specific content, what the details looks like, um, how you can play content, and we'll see it from there. So this is the main browse of the app, how it looks. This would be your media that would be here. Um, maybe I need to click once more to start it. 
Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh. My, my media personnel, Mario, help me out starting the video. We worked really hard on these slides to make the video perfect. Oh, there we go. OK, so this is a quick walkthrough of what the app looks like. These are your different categories as the, you click up and down, different videos available in the feed. As you select one, you get more information about the video. You can watch now or display the, the full details. The, the media player that comes with it is based on ExoPlayer, uh, but you can write your own media player or plug in other, other video platforms if that's what you'd like to do. But ExoPlayer supports many, many flavors of video out of the box, all your modern bitrate formats. This is the recommended content, so based on any other piece of content, you can integrate in your feed other recommended content. This could be based on tags or, or another URL in your feed. Okay. So this is based on, on Leanback, as Mario talked about before. A lot of the other technology that we built behind the scenes is the feed parsing and data loading um, and our own media player. So Amazon has another toolkit that's been around for a while that you've probably heard of. It's called the Web App Starter Kit. Um, that fits in well with the Fire App Builder. The Web App Starter Kit is built for people that are uh, more comfortable with web technologies, want to customize in CSS and want to use those tools. There's also many online video platforms that support uh, web only, so the Web App Starter Kit's a great option for that. Uh, the Fire App Builder, as I mentioned, is Java-based, so if you're a Java developer, you want to use Android Studio, you want to extend the code in that way, the Fire App Builder is a good, good solution for you. And if you're interested in these modules, um, that will support these out of the box. So more advertising options, analytics options, and login with Amazon, purchase with Amazon, those type of things are available with the Fire App Builder. Uh, this shows the module interface, so many of these features are based on modules. Um, so there's custom interfaces written for each one of these. You can have, use some of the ads that are included with the Fire App Builder. If you have your own custom ad platform, you can write to our interface and use it. You don't need to write, rewrite the rest of the app. You can plug in your own module and, and go from there. The same for these other things. There's various analytics built in, in-app purchasing, social logins, and media player. You can use ours or write your own. Okay, so what's, what's the process for getting started with this? You think this looks good? You want to go off and use it? Um, here's the process for going about that. You configure your feed, so this, this means you need to have your media out, out there somewhere hosted online. Uh, you have a, a JSON or M, MRSS or XML feed. You configure that and using our configuration files. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, you set up your recipe for categories and contents, so your categories can be organized in different ways in different various feed formats. You don't need to go and reconfigure your feed. You can configure this app to, to read your feed as it is and also pull the specific data out of your own content. You customize your UI and modular components, so you select the different modules that I talked about on the previous slide, and you also customize your, your UI. You add your own colors, feeds, and logos, and then you launch your app. Okay, so this is an example of a feed you might have. This is just one example of a format. Your feed could be in any different format, but the common things to have are an ID to uniquely identify the content, a title, some description of it, and some images to display. So you would take this feed that you have, you would write this configuration file to map your content to what the Fire App Builder can understand. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of text here. This is a JSON configuration file. Uh, we'll talk more about this in a workshop later if you're interested. Um, but essentially, the important parts of it are uh, the things highlighted in red are what comes from your feed, and the blue is how you map it to the fields in Fire App Builder. Changing the look and feel, again, a JSON file that you configure. Uh, you can pick different themes and pick different fonts, and there's another file that you would configure colors and, and images in. There's two templates available, so you can change kind of the layout of the app. Um, this is what we call content browse activity. Um, so this is what you saw in the video, one row of content at a time, a bigger image of your, your image to show what you currently have selected. 
You can also pick full content browse, a more、um, layout showing images across the screen and your categories on the left. Okay, so this is available today. You can go and get it at this link, and we have a full link of documentation here、uh, that's at the developer portal as well. You can search for Fire App Builder at the developer portal, or you can go directly here. Okay, I'll hand it back to Mario. Thank you very much, Chris.、Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, again, the, we hope that you like the Fire App Builder. And again, as Chris said, it's available, so go,、uh, go play with it. Uh, and also this afternoon,、uh, there will be a hands on workshop led by、uh, our solution architect, Lucas Sale and Chris.、Um, and they will go hands on on configuring your first、uh, Fire Builder app. So now I want to tell you more about how you can build uh, rich uh, multi screen experiences. So、uh, we had a,、um, a preview of this during the,、uh, the keynote. So Amazon Fling. What is Fling? So, Fling is the easiest way possible to send a uh, mobile uh, content from your phone to, uh, to uh, the big screen, to the Fire TV. So, the great thing of Fling is that、uh, basically allows two、uh, ways communication between your Fire TV and your mobile device. And it's compatible with iOS, Android, and Fire OS. The cool thing of Fling is that if you just want to send Uh, a media content to be played on the Fire TV, that's as easy as sending a JSON file with the URL of your、uh, media file to be played and some metadata like the title and description. But actually, Fling is much more powerful than that because it allows you to create, again, two ways communication. This means that you can build a rich experience on Fire TV, which doesn't necessarily need to be something around media streaming. You can build your own.、Uh, App on around everything you want and have the mobile device communicate with the Fire TV. So, the protocol around、um, Fling and the,、uh, the entire way the APIs is being written is to be much more message agnostic. So, and the, the coolest part is that it's a, a native SDK. This means that you can build、uh, and embed Fling in your、um, native Android apps, both on Fire TV and on mobile. Uh, another very, very easy way to increase、uh, the discoverability of your content is to use Dial. So, Dial stays for discovery and launch, and is, again, the easiest way possible if you have a mobile app and you have a Fire TV app to start the Fire TV app from your phone.、Uh, so, it is as easy as setting up a few lines of code in your Android app. Uh, register your Fire TV app on the dial registry, and basically, what will happen is that、uh, when the,、uh, the phone sends a message, this intent gets fired up to the dial registry, which will pop up your Fire TV app、um, on the Fire TV of your user. And that's its own scope. Again, so it's similar to Fling, but it's much, much easier to configure. It's a great way to easily、uh, bring more discoverability to your content. And talking about content discoverability, that's, that's the next big,、uh, big chapter of our chat today.、Uh, so, content discoverability is massively important. As I said, there are now thousands of apps on, on Fire TV. And if you're a content creator, so not necessarily a developer, let's say you have a lot of videos and content, and you want to increase、uh, traffic on this content. And at the same time, you want to increase the traffic on your, the mobile app of your, of your startup, of your company. There is、um, a feature which is called catalog integration that you can use to increase discoverability of your content. So, basically,、uh, the way catalog integration works is that you need to configure、uh, and feed Amazon with the metadata of the content that your service is providing. And we analyze this data, we index this data, and we then make this content indexable and searchable through the main interface of the Fire TV. To give you an example of how this works,、um, I prepared a video which hopefully will run fine.、Um, and it's about the recently integrated、uh, Netflix catalog integration. So let's say we search for the Big Bang Theory. This will pop up. And this is the main interface of the Fire TV. And we have indexed all the content that we've been provided. So in this case, for example, we index all the episodes and all the series for the Big Bang Theory. And this content is actually is not on Amazon Instant Video. This is Netflix content. So, 
you will see at a certain point that we select an episode, and here you see Watch Now with Netflix. This means that this content will play th directly through Netflix. So when you click play, the Netflix starts up. So, again, the, everything we're doing here is to help you guys, uh, helping developers and content creators connect to customers. And, and so at the end, the important bit is to take your app and publish it. And if you want to access all the uh, users and customers of Fire TV, of course, you need to publish your app on Amazon App Store. So the submission process for Fire TV is pretty much uh, identical to the submission process of, of the other apps. We have a review process, again, to make sure that your app is fully compatible. And if you go on developeramazon.com slash app store, you will find all the information needed for, um, uh, for knowing how to publish your app on Fire TV. So with that being said, um, I have finished for this presentation. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the new features that we'll build in for you guys. And uh, now, I, again, please, again, provide me feedback uh, through the survey. And again, there are still a lot of devices to be win. Um, and so stay tuned. And now we have a little break in between. Uh, we change uh, to the next speaker. So please stay in the room. Thank you very much.